All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another Facebook Live event. We're gonna give everyone just a few minutes to tune in and then I'll start the chat. Meanwhile, enjoy our meerkats getting some enrichment. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another Facebook Live event here at the Fort Worth Zoo. My name is Olivia and I'm one of the interpretive specialists here. And today we're gonna be journeying back down to our African savanna and meet our meerkats. Now you guys might have seen our meerkats um, on our social media over the past month. Uh, once when they got their peanut butter on the glass as enrichment and another whenever they met one of our outreach animals, Hector, the Patagonia KV. And today the Facebook Live video is all about them. And if you guys have any questions about our meerkats, feel free to submit those and I will do my best to answer as many of them at the end of the chat. Now meerkats are from Africa and more specifically, they're from Southern Africa in the Kalahari Desert. And they reside in open arid grasslands with few trees. Now you guys at home might be looking at the meerkats thinking that they look very similar to prairie dogs or other rodents, but these guys are actually not in the rodent family. They're actually in the mongoose family. And they're unique members of the mongoose family because they only have four toes instead of five. And on the end of each of those toes is one very long, is a very long claw on each toe that helps them dig through the dirt and create tunnels in search for their food. Now, right now the meerkats are getting their afternoon snacks. So you guys are gonna get to see them eat for the next few minutes during this video. But meerkats are insectivores, meaning that they primarily eat insects or bugs. Uh, and they use those long claws to help dig through the dirt and search for the bugs that are hiding under the ground. Now, meerkats favorite foods are typically worms and other bugs, but they will occasionally eat spiders, lizards, eggs, birds, rodents, and even scorpions. And they can eat the scorpions because they actually have an immunity to the venom. Um, occasionally they will eat some plants as well. And that's because typically meerkats don't drink water. So they get most of their hydration from eating roots and tubers. Here at the Fort Worth Zoo, they get a variety of things in their diet, including a meat specialized for zoo carnivores, um, mealworms, crickets, a kibble that helps keep their teeth clean, and carrots. Now meerkats have several adaptations that help them thrive in the arid desert environments that they reside in. One of those adaptations is their thin fur. That thin fur allows them to either warm up or cool down quickly by laying on rocks or sand or hiding in the shade. They also have dark patches around their eyes that act very similarly to sunglasses or the stripes underneath a football player's eyes during a game where it helps reduce glare and allows them to easily search for their food and keep an eye out for predators. Now again, they have those long claws on their toes that help them create vast underground tunnels up to five to six feet deep. Those tunnels not only help protect them from predators, but it also helps protect them from the heat in the summers. So on a hot summer day, the temperature at ground level can be upwards of 110 degrees. But just a few feet underground, temperatures can drop over 30 degrees. So during the hot summer months, you might see the meerkats hide underground during the heat of the day, waiting for it to cool down a little bit. Here in our meerkat exhibit at the Fort Worth Zoo, they actually have about five feet of dirt to create vast tunnel systems in. Um, that's encased by concrete to help prevent the meerkats from tunneling out of their exhibit. Now, occasionally our keepers will go in there and collapse some of the tunnels to encourage both mental and physical stimulation to create new tunnels as they would be doing naturally in their environment. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I find most interesting about meerkats and something that creates that makes them very unique as a species, and that's their social structure, communication and group roles. Now, meerkats are a matriarchal society, meaning that the girls are in charge. And a group of meerkats is called a mob. And a mob of meerkats can, on average, be anywhere between 15 to 40 individuals um, at any given time. 
and that can be made up of one mating pair and their offspring or a few family groups but in any mob there is a dominant male and female and the dominant male and female are typically the only uh, members of the mob that breed however all members of the meerkat group are required to help care and uh, take care of the young now a meerkat can take uh, a meerkat's habitat can encompass over four square miles of land and because it is so large it often overlaps with neighboring meerkat territories so in order to mark where they say their territory is they actually have a scent gland underneath their tail that they rub on rocks and plants to signal to other groups of meerkats that that's their territory and if they get too close there might be a quarrel now if the other meerkats do get too close, meerkats will sometimes duke it out in what looks like an old school war strategy where they actually line up in front of each other and mob the other group where they'll puff each other or they'll puff their chest out, they'll flick their tail, they'll hiss and more. Typically no actual fighting ever occurs because the group that has the larger number of members almost always automatically wins. Now, when meerkats aren't defending their territory, they spend most of their days out searching for food. Now, being only around two pounds themselves, being out in the open typically leaves them open and vulnerable to become prey themselves. So they actually have a member of their group act as the watchdog or the lookout called the sentry. And the sentry will climb to the highest termite mound or rock lean back on their tail to get the best vantage point and look out for potential predators such as jackals or eagles. If a predator is spotted, then they will call out an alarm to the rest of their group, signaling them, signaling them that there might be danger nearby. Meerkats actually have an extremely complex communication system that allows them to tell their group the specific type of predator that might be around. So they'll have a different call for an aerial attack um, such as an eagle, as opposed to a, a predator on the ground like a jackal. Once the meerkat group has been alerted, then they'll typically run into one of their nearby tunnels for safety, or they'll mob up together to try to fend the predator off. Now, babies uh, are most likely born during the warm summer months where resources are plentiful, and when there are young, there is a group member that is uh, designated the babysitter for the day. And while the rest of the group goes out and searches for food, the babysitter will stay back with the young in the tunnels and protect them and care for them. The babysitter's role is to help teach the meerkat pup uh, how to be an adult, but they are also responsible for moving the meerkats to another tunnel if the group decides to move during the day. At the end of the day, the parents typically come back with some sort of food to help teach the pups how to hunt and care for themselves. So they might be throwing the food around, encouraging the pups to get up and move around and search for their food. They may teach them how to dig or even how to protect themselves from a scorpion's pinchers so that they are well prepared to go out and hunt for themselves at only around two months old. Overall, the meerkat's uh, social dynamics are quite complicated and everyone in the group having rotating roles to ensure survival of the mob. Between that and their complex communication system, they generally outsmart and overcome any potential struggles. Now at this time, I'd like to open up our Facebook Live to any questions that you guys might have at home. Hopefully we can get those answered for y'all. What are they eating? So um, they do get a variety of things in their diets. They uh, are getting a snack of carrots right now. So meerkats don't typically drink water. So they oftentimes get their hydration, they get their water from different plants that they eat, such as roots and tubers. Here they get carrots. How many meerkats are at the Fort Worth Zoo? We have six meerkats. We have four boys and two girls, and they range in age from five to six. Can you tell me a little bit more about their claws? Um, so they have specialized uh, hands that allow them to create those big tunnels underground. So they have four toes, which is actually unique to their uh, family. Most mongoose species have five toes, but meerkats have four. And at the end, they have a long claw that is specialized to help them dig. So not only do those claws help dig those big tunnels that you guys might see in the yard out here, but they help them dig through the dirt to help find their food as they typically eat lots of bugs. 
Um, how many babies do meerkats have at a time? So their litters can range between one pup and eight pups, but on average they have around three to five. Do the keepers do any training with meerkats? Yes, they do train the meerkats. They are target trained, so that is where they will hold out a target um, and the meerkats know to go up and touch that target. And once they have touched it, they will get a reward. This makes it uh, very easy for the keepers to maneuver the meerkats from one area to another if needed, or to get a good look at all angles of the meerkat. They're also trained to step on a scale so that we can get a weight on these guys and make sure that everyone's staying at a healthy weight. If they are underweight or overweight, we know that they can, um, that we can adjust their diets to um, compensate for that. And about how big are meerkats? They only weigh around two pounds. Have we had meerkat babies at the zoo? Um, these guys have not had meerkat babies. Um, we are not breeding these guys currently, but in the future, we don't know what the plan is. Um, do keepers ever go in with the meerkats? Um, yes, keepers do go in with the meerkats. Um, they will go in and put out enrichment like you see out here, these boxes that are filled with um, their different foods. They'll also go in to do that training that I just talked about. And where are meerkats found in the wild? They are found in Africa. Um, and specifically, they're found in Southern Africa, so around South Africa and the Kalahari Desert. How old is a meerkat when it is considered an adult? So they reach maturity around a year and a half old. Um, and because these guys are a matriarchal society, the females, once they become adults between one and a half and three years old, are actually expelled from the group. So they're kicked out and uh, they're told to go find their own meerkat group. But typically the males also have left by this time as well. And do they have any predators in the wild? They do have predators. So being only around two pounds and around um, a foot, a foot and a half long, um, they can easily become prey to some other animals such as jackals or birds of prey like eagles and hawks. And do you know where the name meerkat comes from? Uh, I actually don't know where that uh, name comes from. That's a good question and I'll have to look it up. And what is the gestation period of a meerkat? Um, on average, their gestation period is around 11 weeks. Can you tell us a little more about the roles, the different roles of the group? Yeah, so a meerkat's family group has lots of different roles in um, their mom. So they have roles such as the sentry, which is the lookout. Um, and those are the guys who, while all the other meerkats are searching for food, they're going to be on the highest termite mound or rock, and they're gonna be looking out for any of those predators like jackals or eagles or hawks. They also have the babysitter, and those are the ones that are gonna stay back with the young while the rest of the group goes out and searches for food during the day. They also have teachers, which help um, uh, teach the young how to be an, a mature meerkat and all the skills that they're gonna need to be successful in life. And then of course there's the hunters who go out and search for the food uh, and look for uh, food to bring back for the babies during the day. Do you know how old the meerkats are? They range between five to six years old. And how do we keep them from breeding here at the zoo? So they're actually on birth control. The females are on birth control. So um, that actually prevents them from uh, breeding and reproducing. And are they endangered? They are not endangered. They're actually considered least concerned. So that means that they have a stable population that we're not worried about at the moment. But if you guys at home want to help care for meerkats and make sure that they stay at that least concern level, things that we can do are supporting your local zoos because zoos help support conservation efforts throughout the world. So if you guys would like to help support Fort Worth in the conservation efforts that we have here, we would love for you guys to join us in our North Texas Giving Day on May 5th and help support the Fort Worth Zoo. Or if you wanna support meerkats specifically, you can actually adopt a meerkat. So you'll get a stuffed plush meerkat along with an adoption certificate and some other goodies. And is that information found on our website? Yes, you can find the adoption information if you go to the fortworthzoo.org website. And last question, can you one more time tell us about their favorite foods? 
So um, meerkats are insectivores, meaning that they are bug eaters. So they like to eat lots of worms and crickets and other bugs. But a special treat for the meerkats would be something like peanut butter. So something that's really sweet um, and high in calories for them that they only get every once in a while as a treat or a reward. All right, now at the end of our Facebook Lives, we always like to give y'all a um, activity to do at home. And today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about lifestyle uh, um, learning. So just like meerkats, uh, us as people have different roles that we play within our families, within our societies, in our, home, in our homes. Um, so I want you guys to get with your adult or guardian and talk about the different roles that are in your household. So if we look over here, um, we can review the meerkat roles and maybe those would translate into some of y'all's roles at home. Do you guys have someone at home that cooks and another person that cleans up afterwards? Does someone at your house work? Do you have aunts or uncles, brothers, sisters, or um, family friends that help play a role in your life as well? Is there someone who is a babysitter? Is there someone who's a teacher? Maybe that role has changed since the pandemic has started. Um, and what roles do you play in your house? And will those roles change as you grow up? So discuss that with your guardian um, or your adult in your life and figure out what some of those things might be and whether they will change as you grow up. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us here at the Fort Worth Zoo for another Facebook Live event. Um, we look forward to hearing back from you guys again soon.